All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, there's two points I want to make today. And the first one um, is they're both related to this video that I critiqued yesterday. Um, Who are the rest of the dead by David Daniels, Chick Tracks, publications, or whatever. All right, so the first thing I want to address is, is this a salvation issue? Okay, if you believe that there are going to be zombies running around for a thousand years, is that a, is that a salvation issue? Um, if you believe in post-trib, pre-trib, trans-trib, or whatever, you know, doesn't matter. It's not a salvation issue, according to David Daniels. And, and according to a lot of other people, it got to be fair about this, okay? You know you've written a successful poem when people really think it happened. So look, we're going to listen to his words. Jack Chick and another brother had different views about the end times. Jack trusted God was going to catch away his people before the tribulation. The other brother was sure Jesus was going to come back at another time. Jack looked over at his friend and said something like this. Well, when Jesus catches us both up in the rapture, I'll look over to you and say, yeah, yeah. In other words, he and the other brother will both be caught up, regardless of their views of the end times. Seriously, it is not a salvation issue. There it is, seriously. Okay, that's what I want to address. I couldn't see it there. There it is. Seriously, this, it is not a salvation issue. Okay, so, I want to challenge that. Alright? Let's say you believe at the end of the world, you're going to resurrect and transform into a butterfly. Hypothetically. Is that, you're still saved, right? Because you believe in God? Is that right? Um, no. No, that's not right. So if you believe you're going to transform into a UFO alien, are you still saved? If you believe <clears throat> that at the end of the world all those of a special bloodline will be saved and all Christians will perish are you still saved? do you believe that at the end of the world you will be given your own planet and you'll have spiritual babies or you'll have 10,000 virgins, or yeah, are you still saved? So I, I contend this is absolutely a salvation issue. What are you putting your hope into? Why do you believe in Jesus? You believe in Jesus so you'll turn into a butterfly, or you'll have spirit babies on other planets? Is that why you believe in Jesus? Why do you believe in Jesus? Why do you believe in God? You believe in God, so you're putting your hope into this idea that Christians will perish and a special bloodline will be saved simply for being born? Well, what is it exactly that you're putting your hope into? I, th I think it absolutely is a salvation issue. We that are born of God put our hope into being resurrected at the last day. Resurrected into eternal life where there is no more evil. 
pretty simple. Alright. So that right that's what we're putting our hope into. Eternal life with no evil. Alright, let's say you believe that you uh, will be resurrected into eternal life with nothing but sex. Right? I'm trying to use extreme examples so that you might see. If you put your hope into eternal life, well, evil cannot exist. Sex cannot be part of that eternal life. All right? There's only one hope for eternal life with no evil, and that's through Jesus Christ. I, <laughs> to me, it's so obvious, so blatantly obvious, I, I don't know what to say. Why are so many people teaching various ideas on the end of the world? The Bible is very clear, very simple, and very consistent from Genesis to Revelation that the world is coming to an end and there's going to be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. There's going to be a separation of the saved and the unsaved. There's going to be eternal life for the saved and the second death for the unsaved. I mean, it's just repeated constantly all throughout the Bible. So why are there so many varying views? Well, <laughs> I think it's because people say they believe in Jesus, okay? But what they're putting their hope into is foreign to what the Scripture teaches. In other words, maybe they don't really believe in Jesus. Now think about that. Let me repeat this. If you believe, if you say you believe in Jesus, and your hope is into a coming judgment where all Christians perish, and a special bloodline is saved, and that you will turn into a UFO alien. Are you still saved? The answer has to be no. Because you're putting your hope into something wicked. You're saying you believe in Jesus, but your heart is far from Him. So it absolutely is a salvation issue. I, it, I don't know why you'd want to put your hope into some all this goofy stuff that so many people are teaching. So anyways, I, to me that's important. So I, you know, challenge me on challenging them. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what it is you believe. All right. Well, let's talk about it's a serious issue. I mean, I, one more thing. Let's say, well, it's not a salvation issue. The only important thing, the only thing that matters, is to believe in Jesus. I, again, I strongly challenge that. Okay, now what you're saying is, okay, the truth about everything else doesn't matter. Is that what you believe? The truth doesn't matter? You know, what the Bible says and what the spirit of truth is and all that, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're saved, and after that, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I can't go along with that at all. The truth absolutely matters. All the way. Forever and ever. The truth matters. Is there anything more important than the truth? Hey, to me, that's an absolutely ridiculous statement. It's not a salvation issue, so the truth doesn't matter. 
Right? You're saying that. You're saying that whenever you say it's not a salvation issue, you're saying the truth does not matter. And I can't go along with it. Period. You're saying, well, as long as you're saved, it doesn't matter if you believe that you're going to turn into a green little Martian. <clears throat> Excuse me, a green little man. Or, you know, you're going to have antennas on your head. It, that doesn't matter. That's not a salvation issue. This, so you can believe whatever you want. No, 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 no. No. I can't go along with that at all. Okay, so anyways. And then the... Real quickly, I guess I want to I want to address this question here. Um, oh goodness, golly! Not sure why. Let me try this. Huh? Well, it looks like my comment's not there. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but <clears throat> okay, I'll just go over this anyway. All right, so uh, again, my my comment is Jesus is the first resurrection. You should have known this. John eleven verse twenty five. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. First Corinthians fifteen twenty. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit to them that slept. And then Max Maffilia, Maffili, Maxi Maffili, Maxi Maffili. Christ is the first fruit of them that slept, as you say. But my butt itch is, what about those who don't get or don't yet sleep? All right. Also, Christ is a type of first fruit. There are many types. James one. Revelation 14. Okay. Now that's a great question. It really is. Alright, so let's examine this. Again, Christ is the first fruits of them that slept, as you say. That's what God says. Alright, that's fine. But what about those who don't yet sleep? Now let's stop there. Okay, so I quoted 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. In this same chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, Christ it risen. Now is Christ risen from the dead, become the first fruits of them that slept. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Again, this is the same the same group of people. We shall not all sleep. I'm talking about those of us that are saved. Behold, I show you a mystery. Because up here, he's talking about Christ being the first fruits of them that slept. Alright, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first resurrection the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming so Jesus Christ has came in to the flesh he has become one of us and he has led the way for us all the way through so at the end of the world whether we're dead or alive, we will be changed and lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. See, he has led the way. That's why he's the Christ. That's why he's the Messiah. That's why he's the Master. That's why he's the Lord. That's why he's God Almighty. Alright, and then comes the end. That's the end. Alright, so when we're lifted up, then the unsaved are at our feet and Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and then shall be pro okay so let's 
for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. This goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now we scroll on down. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment and twinkling of night. The last trump for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is directly parallel with what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when Jesus is asked, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The end of the world is at the last trump when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he sends his angels to gather together the elect. And this also parallels the parable that um, I showed you yesterday in Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares, where the wheat is gathered into his barn and the tares are put in uh, bundles and burned. This world is going to burn. Just like what we read in 2 Peter chapter 3. Where the elements and all that is in the heavens and the earth will melt with fervent heat in the works that are there in. Okay, everything about this world is coming to an end. And so when this happens, death is swallowed up in victory. There shall be no more death. Isaiah 25, he will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Okay? Where are we at? So death is swallowed up in victory. So, when this happens at the end of the world, we are lifted up in the air, and we are changed we are all changed and our enemies destroyed then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory therefore there is no more death after the end of the world after the judgment of God after the unsaved are killed and die the second death then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory therefore you cannot have another resurrection of the dead because there is no more death. Get it? Does that make sense? You can't have a resurrection of the dead when Jesus comes And then, a later, another resurrection of the dead. It can't, it's, it can't happen. It would make the Bible a lie. It would make God a liar. You can't have that. Otherwise, this is not true. Isaiah's a liar. Paul's a liar, God's a liar. It's all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that there's coming an end of the world and at the end of the world death is done away with. There will be no more death. So therefore you cannot have more death after death is done away with. I could say this a hundred times and I really don't think unsaved people will be able to hear it and to understand it's only by the Spirit of God it's only when God reveals these things to us that we can hear them even though they are being said all throughout our life forever and ever okay I mean this is not a new revelation it's always been in the Bible and it's always been examples in our life nature itself 
teaches us this that there's coming an end there's coming an end of this world there's coming an end of this life in this world you know it regardless of what you believe this world's coming to an end deep down in your soul you know it is and when you remove sin you remove death okay the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ all right so to suggest there is another resurrection after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven after we are resurrected to, to suggest that is to suggest there is no victory when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven does that matter <laughs> yeah why are you believing in Jesus if you don't believe he can't put an end of sin and death and lawlessness and wickedness and evil and iniquity and all the corruption if he can't do it when he comes in the clouds of heaven nobody can so you don't believe he can do it then do you really believe in him at all is it a salvation issue if you believe that you're going to be resurrected into a headless zombie who's going to grow a third head and antennas and up have sex and all that sort of stuff is that really believing well that's not a salvation issue is it or are you sure because it might be what are you putting your hope into isn't that why you believe in Jesus because you want this world to come an end you want a better world that is promised for us you want eternal life you want a life where there is no more evil no more sin no more death isn't that why you believe in Jesus or do you believe in Jesus because you want to see people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ get magically transformed into saved people? And the people that actually do believe in Jesus Christ, you want to see them perish. And you want to believe that you're going to be given a planet and have all the virgins to yourself? And have spiritual babies and all that is that okay well not a salvation issue so it's okay it's not the truth so it's okay are you sure about that I, I can't go along with that I can't agree with that I can't falsely I'd be a liar if I said that was not a, not a salvation issue I'd be a liar the truth matters